Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jia Xuan and I'm the head tutor of this course. And it's really an amazing experience to work with you guys. And I hope you learn a lot from the course. Uh, today, I'm excited to present uh, my recent uh, research, Design Space of Graph Neural Networks. So in this lecture, uh, we cover some key questions for gene design. Uh, specifically, we want to answer how to find a good gene design for a specific gene task. Uh, this problem is really important, but also challenging uh, because domain experts want to use state of our GNN on their specific task. However, there are tens of possible GNN architectures. Uh, for example, in this lecture, we have covered GCN, GraphSage, GAT, GIN, et cetera. Uh, the issue here is that the best gene design in one task can perform badly for another task. And redo hyperparameter grid search for each new task is not feasible. And I'm sure you have some hands-on experience in your uh, final project, and you know turning the hyperparameter of genes is notoriously hard. Uh, in this lecture, our uh, key contribution in this work is that the first systematic study for a gene design space and task space. And in addition, we also released the code platform GraphGene, uh, which is a powerful platform for exploring different gene designs and tasks. Uh, to begin, we first introduced the terminology that we'll use in this uh, lecture. Um, so a design means a concrete model instantiation. For example, a four layer graph stage is a specific design. Design dimensions characterize a design. For example, a design dimension could be the number of layers L, which could take values among four, uh, two, four, six, eight. And design choice is the actual selective value in the design dimension. For example, the number of layers L equals two. Design space uh, consists of a Cartesian product of all the design dimensions. Really, it enumerates all the possible designs within the space. A task is a, a specific task of interest, which could be, for example, a node classification on Quora dataset, graph classification on enzyme dataset. And the task space consists of all the tasks that we care about. And in this paper, we introduced the notion of GN design space. And actually, we have uh, go into much de uh, detail in the previous lecture. So here, we'll just uh, do a quick recap. Uh, so in uh, this de GN design space, we consider first uh, the intralayer uh, design. And we have introduced that a GN layer can be understood as uh, two parts, the transformation function and the aggregation function. And uh, here, we propose a general instantiation under this perspective. So concretely, it contains four design dimensions. Um, so we have uh, whether to add batch norm, uh, whether to add dropout, um, the exact selection of the act activation function, and the selection of the aggregation function. Next, uh, we are going to design the interlayer uh, connectivity. And in the lecture, we have also introduced uh, different ways of organizing GN layers. And in, in, this, uh, in this work, uh, we consider adding some uh, pre-processed layers and post-processed layer uh, in addition to the GN layers, uh, which can uh, jointly uh, form a complete graph neural network. So the intuition of adding pre-processed layer is that it could be pretty important uh, when expressive node feature encoders are needed. So for example, when our nodes are uh, extracted from images or text, would be considered using some uh, expressive, say, convolutional neural networks or transformers to encode these node features. And then we may also add some post-process layer after applying graph neural network computation, uh, which are important when we are going to, say, uh, reason or transformation over node embeddings. And some examples uh, are, say, uh, doing gra uh, graph classifications or some applications around uh, knowledge graphs. And the core, uh, core of the graph neural network are uh, GN layers. And there, we consider different uh, strategies to add skip connections. And we found that this really helps uh, improve uh, deep GN's performance. Uh, the finally, we'll cover uh, different learning configurations for GNs. And actually, this is often neglected uh, in current literature. Uh, but in practice, we found that these learning configurations have high impact on a GN's performance. So specifically, we consider um, the batch size, the learning rate, the optimizer for gradient update, and uh, how many epoch do we train our models. 
So in summary, uh, we have proposed a general gene design space that consists of uh, intra-layer design, intra-layer design, and learning configuration. And if you uh, consider all the possible combinations, this really leads to a huge space. So it contains uh, 315,000 possible gene designs. And um, to clarify, our purpose here uh, is that we don't want to, and we cannot cover all the possible gene designs. Because uh, for example, you can even add more uh, design dimensions, say whether to add attention, how many attention has to use, uh, et cetera. So this space is really uh, very, very huge. So uh, what we're trying to do is to propose a mindset transition. So we want to demonstrate that studying a design space is more effective than studying individual gene designs, such as uh, uh, considering only considering graph stage, GAT, those individual designs. So uh, after introducing the GN design space, we will then introduce the GN task space. And we will categorize GN tasks uh, into different uh, categories. Um, so the common practice is to categorize GN tasks into node classification, edge uh, prediction, and graph level prediction tasks. And we have covered how do we do this uh, in previous lectures. Although this, uh, this taxonomy is reasonable, it is not precise. So for example, if we consider node prediction, and we could do say uh, predict node causing coefficient. Another task could be uh, we will predict the node subject area in a citation network. So although these tasks are all node classification, uh, they are completely uh, completely different in terms of their semantic meaning. However, creating a precise taxon ta taxonomy of GN task is very hard because first uh, this is really subjective how you want to categorize different tasks. And second uh, is normal GN task can always emerge and you cannot uh, uh, predict the future of the uh, unknown uh, GN task. So our innovation here is to propose a quantitative task similarity metric. And our purpose here is to understand GN task. And uh, in, in, in a result, we can transfer the best GN models across different tasks. And so here's a concrete uh, our innovation uh, where we propose uh, quantitative task similarity metric. So to do this, uh, we will first select a notion called anchor models. So here's a concrete example. Suppose we want to uh, measure the similarity between task A, B, and C, and then the anchor models are M1 to M5. The second step is that we will characterize a task by ranking the performance of anchor models. So here, say task A have the ranking of say one, two, three, four, five, Task B have the ranking, uh, which is different, which is uh, one, three, two, four, five. And task C, again, has another ranking among the anchor models in terms of their performance. And I would argue uh, the key insight here is that uh, the task with similarity, uh, similarity rankings, uh, uh, similar rankings are considered as similar. So for example, um, here we can see the similarity between the rankings of uh, task A and task B is pretty high and the similarity between task A and C is pretty low. And this way we can give a quantitative measure between different G and tasks. Uh, the next question is that how do we select the anchor models? So more concretely, we will do uh, three steps to select the anchor models. Uh, first, we'll uh, pick a small data set that is easy to work on. And second, we'll randomly sample N models from our design space and we will run them on our data set. For example, we can sample 100 models uh, from our uh, entire design space. The third step is that we will sort these models based on their performance, and then we will evenly select N models as the anchor models, whose performance range from the worst to the best. So for example, we have picked uh, random 100 models, we will sort them by their performance, and then say we'll pick the top model as the first anchor set, uh, anchor model, and the, say the 10 percentile uh, model as the second anchor model, and then up to the worst model among the 100 models. And our goal here is really to come up with a wide spectrum of models. And our intuition is that a bad model in one task could actually be great for another task. And we have verified this uh, via experiment results. Concretely, we can collect, uh, collect uh, 32 tasks uh, which are uh, node and graph classification tasks. And uh, we have six real world node classification tasks, uh, 12 synthetic node classification tasks, uh, including uh, predicting node classification coefficient and node page rank. And then we also have six real world graph classification tasks, 
and eight synthetic graph classification tests, uh, including uh, predicting graph average pass length. The final topic we will cover is that having defined the uh, gene design space and task space, how do we evaluate gene designs? For example, we want to answer the question like, uh, is, graph, uh, is batch norm generally useful for GNNs? Um, here, the common practice is just to pick one model, for example, a five layer 64 dimensional GCN and compare two models uh, with or without batch norm. Uh, our approach here is that uh, it's more rigorous uh, that is, uh, we know that we have defined 300,000 uh, models and 32 tasks. And this really leads to uh, about 10 million model task combinations. And what we're going to do is to first sample from the 10 million possible model task combinations, and we will rank the models with batch norm equals true or false. The next question is that how do we make it scalable and convincing? And more concretely, I will propose the approach called a controlled random search. So the first step is to sample random model task configurations from the entire design space. And we perturb the batch norm equals true or false. So for example, uh, we have different uh, uh, models uh, with different uh, gene designs, such as uh, ReLU activation, pre-ReLU activation, and different number of layers, different la layer connectivities, and they are applied to different gene tasks. What we're gonna do is that we will fix the all the rest of design and task dimensions, but only perturb its batch norm dimensions into true or false. And in the meantime, we will control the computation budget for the older models, so that this comparison is really rigorous. And then we will rank batch norm equals true or false by their performance. Here, lower ranking is better. So for example, we can see, okay, uh, in, in one application, batch norm equals true have validation accuracy of 0.75, uh, but uh, false with only uh, 0 0.54, which means that batch norm equals true is better. So it has a lower ranking of one. And sometimes there could be a tie because say two then choices are pretty close in terms of their performance. The final step is to plot average or distribution of the ranking of the batch norm equals true or false. So for example, here we see uh, the average ranking of the batch norm equals true is lower, which means that uh, in general, batch norm is equals true uh, often performs better so to summarize, um, here we really propose an approach to convincingly evaluate any new design dimensions. And for example, we can use the same strategy to evaluate a new gene layer that we propose. So here are the con uh, key results. First, we will demonstrate a, a general guideline for gene designs. So uh, we show that certain design choices exhibit clear advantages. So we'll first look at those uh, intralayer uh, designs. Um, the first uh, conclusion that uh, batch norm equals true are generally better. And our explanation is that uh, GNNs are hard to optimize, therefore batch normalization can really help um, the gradient update. And then we found that dropout equals uh, zero, which means no dropout is often better because we found that GNNs actually experience underfitting more often than uh, overfitting. So batch norm, uh, uh, sorry, so uh, dropout uh, doesn't, uh, is, uh, doesn't help too much. And then uh, we found that uh, p value activation actually uh, really stand out. And this is our new finding in this paper and uh, versus the uh, common practice of only using the value activation. And finally, we found that some aggregation is always better because uh, we have explained in the lecture that some is the most expressive ag aggregator that we could have. And then we're going to look at the interlayer designs. Um, first, we found that the optimal number of layers is really hard to decide. You can see their rankings are pretty uh, even. And uh, we argued that this is really highly dependent on the task that we have. And also we found that uh, skip connection can really enable hierarchical node representation, therefore is much desired. And finally, we'll look at the learning configurations. We found that the optimal batch size and learning rate is also hard to decide, and therefore it's highly dependent on the task. And we found that the atom optimizer and training more epochs are generally better. The second key result is the understanding of GN tasks. Uh, first, we found that GN designs in different tasks vary significantly. So this motivated that studying a task space is really crucial. So if we look at design um, trade-off in different tasks, like uh, BZR, proteins, and smart world, Sometimes max aggregation is better, sometimes mean is better, and sometimes sum is better. 
And similarly for the number of layers, sometimes say eight layers better, sometimes two layers better, uh, and et cetera. So this uh, argues that our GN task space is pretty helpful. So what we are going to do is to compute pairwise similarity between OG and tasks. So um, recall how we compute GN tasks. We will uh, measure the similarity based on anchor model performance. And then uh, the argument is that our task similarity computation is really cheap. And we found that using 12 anchor models is already a good approximation. And our key result is that uh, the proposed GN task space is pretty informative. So we identified two group of uh, GN tasks. Group A relies on uh, feature information. Uh, and these are some node class uh, or graph classification tasks where input graphs have high dimensional features. And group B, our tasks rely on structural information uh, where nodes have fewer uh, uh, features, but predictions are highly dependent on the graph structure. And then we'll do PCA and do uh, dimension uh, reduction uh, to visualize this in 2D space. And indeed, we verify that similar tasks can have similar best architecture designs. And finally, we're going to transfer uh, our approach to noble tasks. So here we conduct a case study that is to generalize the best models to unseen OGB uh, task. And to our, uh, the, the observation is that the OGB uh, molecule uh, prediction task is unique from other tasks. So it's 20 times larger, highly imbalanced, and requires out of distribution generalization. So this is really a normal task compared with the task they have seen. And here are a concrete step to apply our approach to a normal task. So the first step is to measure 12 uh, anchor model performance on a new task. And then we're going to compute similarity between the new task and the existing task. Finally, we will recommend the best design from the existing task with the highest similarity. So here are the concrete results. Um, so we will pick two models uh, using our task similarity metric. So task A is highly similar to OGB and task B are not similar to OGB. And our finding uh, is that uh, transferring the best model from task A really achieves state of our performance on OGB. However, uh, transfer the best model from task B performs badly on OGB. So this really uh, illustrates that the proposed task summary metric is really helpful. And our task space can really guide the best model transfer to node tasks. To, summarize, uh, to summary, uh, in this paper, we propose the first systematic investigation of general guidelines for gene design and their standings of gene tasks, as well as transferring best gene designs across tasks. In addition, we also release GraphGene as an easy to use code platform for GNs. Uh, thank you for your attention.